this is London Calling in the overseas service of the BBC, calling New Zealand, Australia, the Far East, India, Persia and Iraq, East Africa, the Near East, Italy, North Africa, Malta, Gibraltar, and the whole of the Mediterranean area, Central Africa, South Africa, West Africa, Canada, the United States of America, the British West Indies, Central America, and South America. In a few moments, we shall hear His Majesty the King. This is London. In a few moments, His Majesty the King will speak to his people at home and overseas. He will also be heard throughout the United States of America. Twelve years ago, our nation and empire stood alone against an overwhelming enemy with our best to the war, tested as never before in our history, in God's providence, we survived that test. The spirit of the people, resolute and dedicated, burnt like a bright flame, and lit surely from those unseen fires which nothing can quench. Once more, a supreme a test has to be faced. And this time, of the challenge is not to fight to survive, but to fight to win the final victory for the good of cause. Once again, what is demanded from us all is something more than courage, more than endurance. We need a revival of spirit, a new unconquerable resolve. After nearly five years of toil and suffering, we must renew that crusading impulse on which we entered the war and met its darkest hour. We and our allies are sure that our fight is against evil and for a world in which goodness and honor may be the foundation of the life of men in every land. That we may be worthily matched with this new summons of destiny, I desire solemnly to call my people to prayer and dedication. We are not unmindful of our own shortcomings and presence. We shall ask not that God may do our will, but that we may be enabled to do the will of God. And we dare to believe that God has used our nation and empire as an instrument for fulfilling his high of purpose. I hope that throughout the present the crisis of the liberation of Europe, there may be offered up early, continuous, and widespread prayer. We who remain in this land can most effectively enter 
into the suffering of subjugated Europe by prayer, whereby we can fortify the determination of our sailors, soldiers, and airmen who go forth to set the captives free. The Queen joins with me in sending you this message. She well understands the anxieties and cares of our women folk at this time. And she knows that many of them will find, as she does herself, fresh strength and comfort in such waiting upon God. She feels that many women will be glad in, in this way to keep a vigil with their men as they burn of the ship, storm of the beaches, and fill the skies. At this historic moment, surely, and not one of us too busy, too young, or too old to play a part in a nationwide, a worldwide vigil of prayer as the great crusade set forth. If from every place of worship, from home and factory, from men and women of all ages, and many races and occupations, our intercessions rise. Then, and please God, and both now and in the future, and not to the most, and the predictions of an ancient psalm may be fulfilled. And the Lord will give strength unto his people, and the Lord will give peace his people are the blessing of peace.